honestly so excited to finally be at this point to be able to talk to you about the Batman. I was going to start by complimenting you on this Commissioner Gordon look you got going. Is that a coincidence? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? That's, a to- that's actually what it is. What happened was during the pandemic, um, there was just a moment where I was like, well, you know, everybody cut, you start doing things that you wouldn't do. I, there was a moment where I had to cut my own hair. I shaved my head and did that whole thing. And there was a point where, you know, I had asked everybody who, who was going to be on the Gotham PD. I would say, you know, you got to grow a mustache. Like, that's what it is. We got to have that look. And so at a certain point during the pandemic, I was like, you know what? I made them do it. Why don't I do it? And so now, yes, I have an honorary Jim Gordon look that I carry hey, along. I mean, hey. our Jim Gordon is the great Jeffrey Wright, but I am, I am, a, I am a visual ec- echo of, of, uh, of Gordon's past. I love that. Talking the talk, walking the walk. I love that, man. Uh, congratulations on the film. I'm so excited to have seen it. You did a, an incredible job directing this film. I want to hear about using the volume technology to create Gotham City on your set, because I am I am longing for the day set visits come back and I get to see this in person. You guys really had Gotham there. I want to hear about immersing your cast on the rooftop, whether you used it in the car chases, where that benefited you the most and how that also kind of created new challenges. Yeah, I mean, you know, like Greg Frazier, who I, I, you know, we did let me in together and I've been wanting to work with him ever since. And we had our schedules just didn't align. And then on this film, it finally did again. And I, I was really thrilled because I love him and his, you know, he had, uh, you know, through Rogue One and the Mandalorian started using that volume. And we started saying, you know, he'd used it for a very, very different kind of landscape. You know, the idea of like when you're on the, the planetscape and you're out in a kind of a desert vista or that kind of thing. And so we started talking about the idea, well, gee, could we do something? We talked to ILM. Could we, with our amazing production designer, James Chinlin, design our own Gotham and then in certain environments, bring that and have it around our actors so that we could not only have it there for the actors, but it would be the source of the light. I mean, one of the things in these movies that always happens when you're doing these kind of sort of blockbusters is there's almost always that moment where you're doing the blue screen scene and trying to get that light so that it comes off of that space that doesn't yet exist in such a way that you believe that what you're seeing in the foreground is connected to what you're seeing in the distance. That's a really challenging thing and it almost always sort of stands out. And Greg and I talked about how much we hated that and how hard it is to try and do that. So what on this one we were able to do is um, James was able to design with ILM a very extensive Gotham and the scenes that we used it in, we used, there's, um, I saw a, a version of like where that bat signal would be sort of living as, cause you know, Gordon is now the only one who trusts Batman at this point. It's not, he's not Commissioner Gordon, he's Lieutenant Gordon. And so if he, he's the one who comes up with this idea, but it isn't even on top of the GCPD. I thought, well, what if we do this on an abandoned skyscraper that's part of the renewal program that was never finished. Mm-hmm. And they just keep meeting really like Woodward and Bernstein and in, in, in meeting or like meeting Deep Throat in all the president's men. They meet to discuss this crazy conspiracy in this abandoned unfinished skyscraper and so that meant we could have the city that they were talking about all around them and then later batman meets selena there at sunset and if i had to shoot that scene at sunset we never could have done it because we basically are able to keep the sun where it needed to be in the sky throughout the course of the three days that it took to shoot that scene so working in the volume was thrilling it, it, you had to adjust to it because it's like you had it around you and how you set up shots like the great thing about it was you weren't setting up going like okay well gee i wonder how they'll be in relation to the buildings behind them because they're there and then the actors you have this feeling you sent you know you spend hours there and you feel like you're there and so it was it took time to get adjusted to but it was very special and i think it really um i think it adds a lot visually yeah. to the film we didn't use it in the batmobile chase because you couldn't really take a a, a batmobile and like move it through um a volume we did use some of the panels in some of the places when you had to do some driving shots but we also did a lot of stuff practically in that scene like there's a scene where you see the truck falling over and it's in the trail it blows up and colin goes like i got you that whole thing that's Colin actually in the actual car and we're on what's called a 50-50. We take the camera, mount it on the side and those explosions are actually going off behind him and he's reacting to them so that so much of what you're seeing in that in that thing is super, super grounded and real because we did it for real. We actually that's- did jump the Batmobile through the fire. Like that shot's real. That's not a CG shot. That's one of those things I'm always assuming <laughs> that people will see it and they're gonna go like, oh, you know what? That, <laughs> that's just a CG shot, cool, whatever. But that shot, when you're looking in his, in the Maserati in that, in that sort of side mirror and a Batmobile is coming through flames, we did that. 
That is unreal. Wow. Well, I, I already gave me the wrap. I have so, I could talk to you about this all day, and that was so satisfying to hear. Thank you so much, Matt. Cool. Uh, I, I hope to catch up with you again. Uh, yeah, absolutely. To I'm so glad you liked the film, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you.